Welcome back to The Joy of Editing. In today's episode, we're focusing on the Preferences panel in Topaz Photo AI. Setting up this panel correctly is a vital step in maximizing the benefits of Topaz Photo AI. So let's get started and discover how to make this powerful tool work best for you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Today, I want to really focus in on the Preferences panel for Photo AI because it's very important to set it up correctly so you can maximize your workflow utilizing Photo AI. So how do we access the Preferences panel? We'll come up here to the menu, see where it says Topaz Photo AI. Give this a click and click on Preferences. And let's just go over this panel one section at a time. I'll show you how I set mine up, but each one of our needs is different. So the way I do it will probably be different than the way you do it. But we're just going to go over all the different areas that we can make changes and talk about them. Let's start at the top. Let's click on General. Okay, so under General, first off, you have AI Processor. Now, I have mine set for Auto, and it's working well for me, but you could set it for Auto, CPU, or it'll probably list your graphics card, so you could choose whichever you want, but I use Auto, and I think that works well. Now, as far as Lens Corrections, Lens Corrections is enabled. I have mine turned on. Now, you could shut this off, because if you have like a Lightroom workflow, Maybe you just want Lightroom to do your lens corrections for you. So you could shut this on or off. Again, it is your choice. In my case, I have mine turned on and I've been getting pretty good results with it. But, you know, at some point I may go back to using just Lightroom's lens corrections so I could shut this off. But for now, I'm leaving mine on. Now, the next thing we can do is show help prompts. So help prompts are disabled. So you could turn those on by just clicking this toggle here and then you'll get help prompts. If you're a new Topaz Photo AI user, I would suggest keeping the help prompts turned on and that way that'll help you through just until you get to know the product. And then after you get to know the product, they'll probably get in your way and then you can go ahead and toggle these off. Next up, we have check disk space and mine is turned on. You'll get a warning if you're running low on storage on say like a hard drive, this will let you know if you have this toggled on. So I just leave mine on. I do have a lot of hard drive space, but I don't think it's a bad idea to keep this one turned on. And lastly, under the general category, now you'll notice this is just general. We haven't got to export brush or privacy. There are subcategories inside the group general, but right now we're just looking at general. And the last thing here is enable SRG preview fallback. I don't really understand this one that well, but it says SRGB preview fallback is disabled. Preview images will use your monitor's color space when displaying. Now this setting is toggled off by Topaz by default, so you could turn it on and you could pause the video and read through there. But if you're not having any issues, I would recommend just keeping this turned off. Now, by the way, in every one of your categories here, you're going to have this option to reset the default settings. Whenever this is not grayed out, that means you've changed something. So in other words, if you look here, the only thing I really changed under general was I shut off show help prompts. And you'll notice if I click on reset here, that'll turn back on. Now, to accept that, you have to click Save, by the way. All right, but I'm going to go ahead and shut mine off because I don't show the help prompts. Now, by the way, anytime you change any setting in Preferences, Save will turn blue, meaning you've changed something. In other words, that means if you want to accept everything you've changed, you got to click Save. So I'm going to click Save. And, and here's another important thing. Every time you change things in Preferences, and you click save, autopilot will run again with the changes you made to the preferences, which is good for experimenting to see if you want to change a preference. So you could change a preference, click save, autopilot runs again, and then you can see if the preference change will be beneficial to your workflow or not. You can always change it back. Now let's get back to the preferences panel. So I'm gonna click on Topaz Photo AI and click on preferences again. And you'll notice right now, save is not in blue meaning i have not changed anything so we've just gone over everything under general now let's go to export we're going to work our way down this list so be patient i think if you watch the whole video it'll really be helpful to you now the first thing we have here is use adobe dng sdk for export i highly recommend that you toggle this on because i'm getting better results with my color when i'm using raw files and this is only for raw files 
It uses this Adobe DNG SDK. I think this stands for Software Developers Kit. So it's something Topaz are using, and it is beneficial for raw files. Whenever I send an image from Lightroom, a raw file, into Topaz Photo AI, when I have this toggled on, I get really great results. I'm not seeing hardly any if any color shifts in my image when they come back into Lightroom. So I highly recommend that you try that. You can always shut this off if it's not working out for you. And then here, close images after saving. Now I have mine turned on. So after I save an image, say if I'm just using this as a standalone app and I pull a bunch of images into here, if I toggle this on, after those images are saved out, they'll be closed out of Topaz Photo AI. So that's what I use. But if you don't like that, if you want to keep those images still in there, if you want to check them out further, you can uncheck this or untoggle this. And again, whenever you see this highlighted, reset to default, you know I don't have the default setting. So if I click reset to default, you'll notice by default this is shut off. And now you'll notice since I made a change here, this turned blue for save. I'll toggle this back on because I'm going to close images after saving. And now you'll notice save is not in blue, it's in gray. I haven't made a change. I went back to my original setting. Next up is brush. Let me click on brush. Now this brush is for any module that uses a brush, like the subject selection, as well as preserve text. Those are two modules that use brushes. Now if you click right here, you're going to get some means of changing the color. You'll notice I set mine up for blue, but you could choose magenta, green, any color that you want. I'm just going to click cancel. It'll look different depending if you're on a Mac or a PC. And you can also adjust the opacity of the brush right here. So very simple stuff. But again, that works under uh, select subject as well as preserve text. I believe that's the only two places it's used. And lastly, we have privacy. So let me click on privacy. Now, if you're somebody that doesn't want anybody getting your images, you can uncheck this. Right now, I have mine set up for can upload images by default. By default, let me read this to you. The can upload images to improve Topaz Photo AI checkbox will be checked. You're helping us improve Topaz Photo AI by sending us some of your images. These images may be used for AI model training. They will never be shared with anyone outside the company. You can uncheck the checkbox on any export you'd prefer not to have uploaded. In plugin modes, images will always be uploadable. Now let me just pause there for a second. Right now, I am I brought this raw file in from Lightroom, so that's coming from a plugin. So if I have this checked on, I don't have an option to check it off on an export. But if I was running this as a standalone app, I would have that option. Even though I had this checked on, I could uncheck it for maybe a certain file that I didn't want them getting. Okay, so I'd have that choice on export. But as a plugin, you don't. But you can simply shut this off by clicking this toggle right here. And now it says by default, the can upload images to improve Topaz Photo AI checkbox will not be checked. And then it says you can still check the checkbox on any export you can send to uploading to help us improve Topaz Photo AI. So in other words, you could leave this off, but on export, you can have the choice to send an image up to them. Say you were having a problem with a certain image, you can let that go up to them if you wanted to or not. In my case, I always like to leave this turned on to help Topaz out because I think it benefits all of us if we let them see our images and use those to train their AI models. And last under privacy, we have anonymous usage tracking. This is turned on by default. Anonymous usage tracking is enabled. You are helping us improve Topaz Photo AI by sending us anonymous usage metrics and crash reports. So if Photo AI crashes, they're getting reports and so on and things of that nature. So if you don't want them getting that information, shut this off. Or if you don't want them getting any of your images, shut this off. It's totally up to you. You do have that choice. It's all in your hands. They won't be taking your information. I want to show you one other thing. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel the preferences for now because I want to show something to you. As I said, this image came from Lightroom. So right now, if I click Save to Adobe Lightroom Classic, it's going back. But let's say I have an image that I loaded into Photo AI as a standalone app. I want to show you something. This image was a raw file loaded into Topaz Photo AI as a standalone app. So now when I click Save Image, right here you notice it says Improve Topaz Photo AI. Now this deals with that privacy preference. This is where 
you can send your images up to Topaz, okay, or not. In fact, if you had your privacy set up to never give them an image, you still have a choice. If you have a certain image you want them to get, you could toggle this on right here if you wanted to. Or if you have it set to always send images to Topaz Photo AI and you decided this batch of images, I don't want them getting, I don't want them seeing them, you could shut this off. So again, you have that choice. You don't have that choice when you're using Photo AI as a plugin, like say from Lightroom, because this export dialog doesn't come up, but it will honor whatever your privacy settings are set for. I just wanted to be very clear on that. So I'm just going to click cancel here for now. Now I'm back to that Lightroom image, but let's go back up to our preferences again. So come up to Topaz Photo AI and click on preferences. And now we're going to go into autopilot. Now, when I click on autopilot, these are the autopilot initial settings right here. Automatically apply filters. Autopilot will automatically apply any filters that it recommends when an image is loaded. Now you have a choice to enable that, which I have that and I recommend it. I like autopilot. I think it does a great job or you can disable it if you're somebody that likes to do it all by yourself and you can see reset to default settings is grayed out so these are the actual default settings okay and now we're going to go into subject detection so let's click on subject detection and we'll go over that and we'll continue through the list now i'm pretty sure that subject detection deals with the sharpen module okay so what we'll be getting sharpened and right now you see mine is set for none if i click on reset to default you can see it's set for the default setting which is basically the subject so i'm going to click this again this is a drop down so default or if you do a lot of portraits you may want to set this up for portrait for landscapes set it up for landscapes or none i generally use none and this way if i want to change it you can always let me cancel here you can always come up here to subject and change it over here anytime that you want. I'm just gonna click cancel for now and let's open our preferences back up. And then next we have upscale and resize. Now you have choices here, default AI model. By default, autopilot will decide which AI model to use for resizing your image. Now you have a choice of auto, which is what I use, or you could use standard, high fidelity, graphics, or low res. And that deals, I'm gonna click cancel, that deals with the upscale right here. This upscale module, if I open this up, I'm going to go ahead and shut this off. But that deals with standard high fidelity graphics or low resolution. I'm going to shut that off for now. Let's go back up here to preferences. And again, I have mine set for auto, but you could choose any one of these models that you prefer. But for me, I find auto pretty much always gets it right. And next we have resize type. By default, autopilot will upscale small images from one and a half to four times to a maximum of 12 megapixels. And this is a drop down. And again, you could change it. You could set an output size if you click here, if you always want to upsize all of your images. I don't use that because I'm generally doing raw files and I'm not upsizing those. If I'll upsize, it'll probably be from a JPEG or maybe say something I've done in Firefly or Photoshop using generative fill or something of that nature but i have mine set for enhanced small images so it'll do that 1.5 times to four times or you could choose none whichever you prefer but i like this one enhanced small images and if your image is not a small image it will not upsize it but if it is small it will upsize it and of course you could always open up upscale and size it to any size you want you don't have to keep this size you could upsize up to six times if you want to. So you, again, you have lots of options. And now let's come down to output resolution. This is a drop down. If I click this, you can see you can preserve the original resolution. Now I changed mine to 300 pixels per inch. And if you highlight this, you can change this number. But mine is set up for 300 pixels per inch. Now notice here it says 300 pixels per centimeter. This is wrong. This is a bug. And I tested this out. This is actually pixels per inch, not per centimeter, okay? But the reason I changed mine to this is because I generally will upsize, like, say, a Firefly image that I want to make a print out of, and I like to use 300 pixels per inch. That's why I changed mine, because those Firefly images default at uh, 72 pixels per inch, and I don't want that. I want 300 pixels per inch, okay? So I changed mine. 
And also in the upscale module, we have minor denoise strength. You could set it for very weak, weak, less, normal, or strong. And I find normal works for me, but you could test out different ones here to see which works best for you. And minor de-blur strength, again, I choose normal, but you can use very weak, weak, less, or strong. That's totally up to you, but you can change that anytime you want. And now let's move on to remove noise non-raw. I'm working with a raw file, so this won't apply for this image, but you can set this up, and I recommend that you bring a non-raw image in and do some experimentation. So there's a drop down right here. So right now, mine is set for low and above, and that's how I like to set mine, but you have your choice of shutting off the noise reduction to never apply the noise reduction. Low, or low and above, if it detects noise low and above, it'll apply noise reduction or medium and above high and above, or only apply noise reduction if you have severe noise. So you could set that up and experiment and find a setting that works best for you. And then as far as default AI model, I like to set mine on auto because I think Photo AI does a really good job when you do that. But you could choose normal or strong or extreme for the model, but I like mine set to auto, so Photo AI picks it for me. And then as far as how much uh, noise reduction do you want, you can choose very weak, weak, less, normal, or strong noise reduction. I like normal, but if you feel you're not getting enough noise reduction, you may want to bump that up to strong. So that is entirely up to you. And now let's move on to remove noise raw. And now for a raw file, we have the same choices. So I'm going to click the drop down. You could have it always off so it doesn't do any noise reduction. But I have mine set for low and above. So if there's any noise I want Photo AI to get rid of it, medium and above, high and above, or severe. So it's up to you, however you want it to detect noise. But I recommend low and above. And I think that's a good setting. But you can do whatever you feel is best for you. And as far as the default AI model, I have mine set for auto because, again, I feel photo AI always gets it right, at least in my experience. But you can choose auto, raw normal, or raw strong. Maybe you shoot a lot of really high ISO images. You may want to keep this on raw strong. But you'll have to experiment. I can't do that for you. You're going to have to try that all out yourself and see what is best for you but i say start out with auto and see what kind of results you get now model strength this is one you can experiment with um, if you want to have a little bit of noise in there you may want to keep it on less weak or very weak i don't really see why you'd ever want to use very weak or weak but maybe less or normal but if you find that normal is not getting you the best results you may want to bump that up to strong now remember anytime you change anything and click save the new preferences are saved and autopilot will run again so you could check it out and see did that help because you might have started out with normal and thought well there's still a little bit of noise in there so then change this to strong for remove noise raw if you're working on a raw file Click save and let autopilot run again. And if you say, oh, now that looks better. So then you may want to keep strong as your default setting, if that makes sense. And lastly, here we have, and this is a great one, enable hot pixel correction. I recommend that you leave this on because if you have a camera and my camera gives me hot pixels from time to time, they show up as a bright dot on the image. This will remove those hot pixels. So I recommend that you keep that on. And now let's move on to sharpen. So we'll click on sharpen. And here again, we have similar settings that we had in the denoising. So I have mine set up for low, soft and above. So soft looking images, you could have it always off low, soft, and above, and I recommend that you start here. Medium, blurry, and above, high, very blurry. So you have your choices, you could set it up, and you're gonna have to experiment to find out which is gonna be best for you. Now the default AI model, again, I recommend auto, but if you get great success with the standard model, or the strong, or the lens blur, say you have a lot of lens blur issues, you may wanna keep it on lens blur, or if you shoot with really slow shutter speeds, you want to keep it on maybe motion blur, but I think auto is a really good choice for most people. And then we have model strength. How much sharpening do you want Photo AI to do? Do you want just a very weak amount of sharpening, a weak sharpening? I don't really recommend either one of these, maybe less. I don't really recommend that one either. Normal, I think, is the one to go with. In my opinion, I would start with normal. But if you felt like normal is not sharp enough, 
you may want to bump that up to strong, but you're going to have to experiment. And remember, after you click save, after you change anything in preferences, autopilot runs again. And so you could test the result. And so if you change this to strong and click save and you felt eh, that was over the top, you could come back into preferences and change this back to normal. Now, remember, you can also, let me click cancel here. In any one of these modules, no matter what you set those for, you always have these sliders that you can change at any time you want. These are just for the autopilot settings, the initial, but you can go ahead and tweak sliders to your heart's content. Let me go back up and open up preferences again. Isn't this preference panel really put together well? You can really make this product work just the way you want it to work. Now let's go to high quality images. Now high quality images, this says remove noise versus sharpen. Okay, and this is for non-raw files. Think like JPEGs, iPhone images, or whatever you have. In other words, right now mine is set for correct the prevailing issues. You can click the drop down. You can prefer it to remove noise or prefer sharpen. And you'll note it says here in cases where non-raw images have low amounts of noise and have low amounts of blur, Autopilot will choose to enable remove noise or enable sharpen, but not both. The drop down below will inform Autopilot of your preference for how these high quality images should be improved. It says below, but it's right to the side here. So click this so you can prefer remove noise or sharpen. It's up to you. Or in my case, I let Photo AI do it for me, correct the prevailing issue. So that's the one I choose. And now let's move on to face detection. Now in face detection, we can let Photo AI know what we want. In my case, I have low quality, which is what they recommend. So it's looking for low quality faces, or you could set it up to get all the faces detected or just the subject or none. And again, you have your choice, but I recommend low quality, which is what they recommend. And then how much face recovery strength do you want to use? Now I have mine set at 100, but if you feel that's too strong, and again, you got to experiment, you may want to pull this back. Click save, autopilot runs again and see what kind of result. And keep experimenting till you find the right amount for this slider here. So it takes a little bit of time to figure this out. But once you get it set, you're good to go. And then you could pick what parts you want Photo AI to enhance. Right now I have none selected, but you could choose to have the hair enhanced along with the face. And when you click it, see the check and maybe the neck as well. So the face, the hair, and the neck. Or maybe you just want the face and the hair so you can uncheck neck. Or in my case, I uncheck hair and neck and just have none selected. So it's totally up to you. And so with none selected, you're only enhancing the face. And then lastly, we have adjust lighting. And these are new beta features. And it's up to you whether you want to use these or not. But the adjust lighting is defaulted by Photo AI at 25. But if you feel that's too strong, you could pull this back. And again, you have to experiment. And again, choose a setting, click Save, Autopilot runs. And then you can see if that result is good or not. And keep refining it till you get it right. And as far as balancing color, you have the choice of maybe you always want your images a certain warmth or coolness. You can adjust this by default. And if the amount that it balances out the color is always too strong, you may find a percentage. You might find like 70% works out really good for most of your images. But again, these are beta features, balance color and adjust lighting. But that's it other than shortcuts. Now, shortcuts are just the list of all your shortcuts. So if you click on shortcuts, here's all of your general shortcuts. And they could really be handy to speed up your workflow. And then you can click on file and see all the file shortcuts here. Uh, view for the view shortcuts. Masking for the masking shortcuts. Cropping for the cropping shortcuts. And I'm just going to click cancel for now because that pretty much covers everything in the preferences. I know this was a long video, but I really felt that some folks out there needed to see this one because we have so much power here in Topaz Photo AI. And it's so important that we know how this stuff all works. And the preference panel is key to making Photo AI really help you out in your photo editing workflow. Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial today. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification and click all so you receive all notifications. Every time I put up a new tutorial, 
you'll get notified about it. And also, if you don't yet own uh, Topaz Photo AI or you want to get some other Topaz products, you can click on my affiliate link directly below this video in the description. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.